seven, eight. Oh, man. He's on a roll now, Billy. Coach K has the record. They are playing around. Oh, oh. Shannon Brown. Chambliss. And hello once again, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to our New York studios and to CBS Sports' continuing coverage of the 2005 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Tournament. Last night, four teams advanced tonight. Four more will do the same to complete the Elite Eight and set the stage for the regional finals tomorrow and Sunday. We begin tonight's doubleheader action with number five seed Michigan State challenging top seed Duke in the Austin bracket. And then about 17 minutes after that game tips, we'll take some of you to Syracuse for that regional semifinal between number 10 seed North Carolina State and sixth seed Wisconsin. For those of you in the North Carolina area, both the Duke and the NC State games will be available. Check your local listings. Tipping at about 940 Eastern time, the second game in Austin pits number Number six seed Utah against second seed Kentucky and at about 10 Eastern time back in Syracuse Villanova the fifth seed tangles with top seed North Carolina surprise I'm joined by my partners on the road to the final four Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis of Sports Illustrated let's talk about who we like in these games beginning with Michigan State against Duke Clark well you talk about Michigan State I love their athleticism on the perimeter and their depth I think those are the areas where they'll have a chance to be better defensively than they were in the first meeting when they lost to Duke by seven in Durham Alan Anderson epitomizes that versatility as a four man he gets matched up with big guys who he can take advantage of out on the perimeter and he's also a very versatile defender that's that's where I think Michigan State has the advantage, and that's why I like them to move forward. But they are going to have to execute during the last couple of minutes of the game, Clark, and that has been Michigan State's problem. And when you're talking about execution against Duke, you're talking about stopping J.J. Redick, who only went for 29 points the first time that they played. Duke as a whole made 55% from behind the arc. Michigan State has the athletes to contain Redick, but he is more than just a shooter. They're going to also have to stop his dribble penetration, hopefully try to get him or Sheldon Williams in foul trouble. I think that's too much to ask, and I think Duke's going to win. All right, a couple of these games have the feel of the kind of games we saw last night, which would only be great, and that's <laughs> one of them. Let's talk about North Carolina State, Wisconsin. Well, when you look at North Carolina State, you talk about a team that's written the leadership and stellar play of their outstanding player, Julius Hodge. He is a stat sheet stuffer supreme in that he's able to do everything. He has 15 assists and only four turnovers in the two tournament games, and he's made every big play they've needed to have made. I look for him to really be the difference in this game. I'm going with the best player theory, which I fell away from last night. But I'm back on it this this time tonight. I think North Carolina State, because of Hodge, he's the difference maker. I agree with you. I think NC State is going to win the game. Hodge is a big reason. I think he'll also need to have a big de a defensive effort. Everybody will against Mike Wilkinson of Wisconsin, who I think has been the best player in the Big Ten, who doesn't play for Illinois. And remember, this is a team that really doesn't have a point guard, a true point guard. And with Wilkinson's size, he's second on the team in assists. He makes 37% from three-point range. I think NC State would do well to put Julius Hodge on Wilkinson because I think with Wilkinson, you need to beat him with your speed and not with your size. But I do think NC State's going to win. All right, our second game's Utah and Kentucky. That's a six seed against a two seed. Who do you like in that game? I like Utah. The best player theory, Andrew Bogut. Uh, uh, Oklahoma's bigs are a lot better than Kentucky's bigs. If they can take care of that pumpkin, they're going to squeeze Kentucky right out of this tournament. Yeah, I agree. They have to play through Bogut, though. In that game against Oklahoma, they let the other guys get going before they went to Bogut. I think Utah has to establish him early and often in the paint to have a chance to beat Kentucky. But I like Utah. And as if Villanova didn't have enough trouble, they're going to have to play against North Carolina tonight, minus Curtis Sumter. What do you think? Well, the Tar Heels have been very, very impressive. The most impressive team outside of Louisville in the tournament to this point, I think they roll. Villanova has been pesky defensively, but they can't handle North Carolina in a track meet type game. That's the only way they can play. North Carolina, I think, wins convincingly. Yeah, North Carolina is going to have more trouble in their next game because it will be a slower game. Villanova wants to run, and that's exactly what the Tar Heels want. We're going to be off and running in just a bit. The road to the Final Four continues after this word from your local. What's at stake tonight? Trip to the regional finals, that's what. For those of you expecting to see the start of North Carolina State against Wisconsin, we'll get you to your tip at 7.27 Eastern time. But coming up now, Michigan State and Duke. We'll send you out to Jim Nance and Billy Packer in Austin right after this. Enjoy the games, everyone. March Madness continues here on CBS. 
CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's basketball championship is sponsored by DiGiorno, Hummer, Coca-Cola, and by Allstate. Sports Line, we've got the tournament covered. Longhorn country deep in the heart of Texas the sweet 16 continues with the road to the final four in Austin Texas the Michigan State Spartans take on the Duke Blue Devils and later tonight on this same floor it'll be Utah and Kentucky and hello friends Jim Nance along with Billy Packer what a night we have in store here a double header first up it's Michigan State and Duke and Billy let's talk about the Spartans what do you see here well here you have and Paul Davis, the number four rebounder in the Big Ten, had a fine game against Duke earlier this year. 17 points and 10 rebounds. A big load to handle inside. And of course, in Chris Hill, you have the number one man in the Big Ten in regard to assist turnover ratio, but he's been 0 for 9 from 3 so far in the NCAA tournament. Billy, what about Sheldon Williams of Duke? Well, I think he's the best defensive player in the country. Here you see him going up with a block, led the ACC in shot blocks this year. And here you have J.J. Redick. What more can you say? First team All-American, ACC Player of the Year, ACC Tournament MVP. Well, our game is brought to you in HDTV by Harrison Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television. Michigan State won the championship in 2000, Duke in 2001, and here they go with the Spartans getting the break right off the tip. And unable to get Ager's layup to drop. And the Devils. Got to finish that shot, yeah. Jim. Wide open. No shot blocked to it at all. Actually, it should have been dunked. Inside, Williams and Davis. What a matchup. Tough. That is. And Williams hits the jumper. Turned opposite his body structure and still made the shot. Now here's an interesting matchup. Shablik Randolph out on Anderson. Anderson's capable of playing even at a guard position. Shablik Randolph asking to do a lot, stepping out on the perimeter. Now Davis with Williams watching him. Neitzel, a freshman point. Comes in the traffic no and way. puts it off the glass. And long rebound to Ewing, and Duke has a chance to do something with it. Stutter step move, Ewing off the glass for two. Ewing has been outstanding. The great game that he played against Mississippi State on both ends of the floor. His leadership has been outstanding in this tournament. Ewing returning to his home state of Texas and on a floor where he played his last high school game. Driving in, Duke takes it away with Sheldon Williams. Brown's got to realize that Sheldon Williams is going to be waiting on him in the post. He ought to actually be looking to make a pass on that play. It's like Reddick got hit in the mouth. There's no blood or is there? Oh, how about that? A 10-second call. I think Riddick may have blood coming out of his mouth. Here are the lineups. Davis with the senior Anderson, Ager Brown, and Neitzel. Sheldon Williams, Shav Randolph, Sean Dockery, and J.J. Redick with Daniel Ewing. First four to the Devils. Good step out. Got to go for the pick and roll, and they do. Anderson underneath, and the Spartans put up two. Good job for Anderson to roll to that basket. Sheldon Williams had to stay with Davis, so he couldn't pick that off. Boy, Tom Izzo just charged over there, yelling at Shannon Brown to stay with Ewing. Sheldon Williams, he's already hit his first shot. And his second. Step in on Davis. So far, there's been no double down from Michigan State. Davis not able to handle Williams on either of those attempts. A Good pick screen. by Davis, yeah, that had Dockery stunned for a moment. Driving in Agar, too strong, and Williams with the big hands. Well, it squirts into the arms of Ewing. Again, driving on Neitzel. Oh, oh that ball on the way up. Yes, sir. And they're not going to call a goal 10. They got it on the way up. It's on the way up, but yep. they do get the foul call. You see that ball on the way up. It was going to hit off the boards. That was a good clean block. Foul is on Neitzel. 
Jim, how about Sheldon Williams? He blocks shots without knocking them away, so he keeps them in play for either himself or his teammates so they can go ahead and generate off the defense their offensive break. Not many guys of his age capable of doing that. Senior co-captain Daniel Ewing out of Missouri City, Texas, just outside of Houston, where he helped lead Willow Ridge High School to the Class 5A championship. November, or make that May of 2001, on this floor, beating Bryan, Texas, for the state championship, and now he returns. And a pretty pretty fair backcourt teammate, T.J. Ford at the time. I mean, could you imagine how they blew by people on the high school level? Davis. Randolph got a piece of it from behind, but it still goes. Pretty nice job by Davis to get in the low post, only two feet away from the basket. You mentioned T.J. Ford. They have his uh, jersey hanging from the rafters here. He led Texas to the Final Four two years ago. Again, Ewing's backcourt made at Willow Ridge. Rennick has not had a shot. Remember the ball game against Delaware State? He went 10 minutes without scoring. Williams Left hand. short this time, and Davis crashes in all alone. Hager so far has kept the ball away from Reddick. An excellent defensive job. Brown back over to Davis. Baseline jumper open. Excellent decision on his part. Not taking the ball to Sheldon Williams. Pulled up for the short jumper. Full court pressure right now by Michigan State. I think this is a good move because it makes Reddick work even more before he gets in a position for the shot. Dockery so far has not been used as the primary ball handler, Jim. Kind of surprised me a little bit. Ewing, tough shot, not a good shot. And Davis plucks it out of the air. State running. Neitzel working on Dockery, and it circles in. Well, a big difference between the first game that these people played and that ball game, Neitzel was no factor. Did not score, played sparingly. you got to remember at that time, Chris Hill was the point guard. Yeah, Neitzel just in the first month of his uh, freshman season. And that was November 30th when these two met at Cameron. Duke winning at 81-74. And Ewing starred with 29 points in the double win. And that's all for Randolph going to Michigan State. Anderson much quicker, even in the low post. Go to the first break. Not at, at eight. Coming up for many of you, North Carolina State and Wisconsin battling up in Syracuse. We'll get you to your tip on time. And last night, these teams advanced to the regional finals. Illinois and Arizona, they'll battle in Chicago tomorrow. Louisville and West Virginia in Albuquerque. They've, all of them have won three games, three more wins. You'll have a national championship. And you look at other regions, Jim. In this particular region, you had seven of the last 14 Final Four champions came out of region out of this region. Syracuse, the only one not to be here on the floor tonight. Reddick nice makes the steal, and Ewing lays it in on the other side. Excellent pass, lofted perfectly, so Ewing could run underneath. Namick is into the lineup for Michigan State, and uh, got a little sloppy with the ball handling that last time. Anderson left open, and that one dips down and out. Out to Torbert, who's also checked in, the senior. Three-point shot. In and out for Brown. And a whistle call on Duke. Going to be Shavlik Randolph going over the top of Namick, who's played valuable minutes here in this tournament. The ACC tournament champion Blue Devils, the number one seed in this bracket with wins over Delaware State. The Hornets put up a good fight in that game in Charlotte. And then uh, defeating Mississippi State, a game that was tied with five minutes to go. The Devils holding those opponents to an average of 50 points a game and 34% shooting from the field. Doing it with defense the first two rounds of the tournament. Namick with Williams behind him. Setting up the shot, the flip, off the mark. And Ewing off to another good start. Had the big game against Michigan State first go-round. Ewing did. He had 29 in that game. He and Reddick were incredible from the three-point range. So far, Reddick has not been able to touch the ball. Hill on him. He needs to get some screens. He's moving without it, but not quickly. Demarcus Nelson in for the Devils, 21, and Lee Melchione, 13. Good block. But right back to Sheldon Williams. Doubled up and a travel call. Michigan State, meanwhile, the five seed and really under the radar, Billy, in this tournament coming in with wins over Old Dominion. And then Vermont. You know, everyone had figured it would be Michigan State and Syracuse meeting in the second round. But Vermont shocked uh, the Orange in the opening round. And this is going the other way. It's going against Namick. So what? Michigan State with wins to get to this point. Old Dominion and Vermont. 
Well, you know, you can't look ahead as to who you're going to play, Jim, and you can't complain if uh, somebody you anticipated being there got knocked out of the way. Nobody votes you forward in this tournament, which is what makes it so special. But it is a Michigan State team. I think much like the Utah team that will be on this floor later today, very little kind of sizzle around that team in the tournament. Not a lot of talk going in, but a very experienced team. Well, you got to remember, all three of the teams in the Big, Ed, Big Ten that we expected to be good, there's Nelson, who has that ability to go inside. Jim, all three of those teams, Wisconsin, Illinois, which is already there, and Michigan State are still alive. So it's not like this league hasn't shown it can do something in this tournament. That's Sheldon Williams defending that forced that takeaway. Davis got caught in midair. Sheldon Williams had a hand on it, and the Blue Devils snatch it. There you see Reddick trying to get loose on inside. Nowhere to go for Nelson. And all Michigan State on the floor. Davis gets tied up, and the arrow belongs to Duke. You know, we talked about uh, Illinois with his win last night against Wisconsin-Milwaukee. It'll be Illinois and Arizona. And what should be quite a collision tomorrow for the right to go to the Final Four. Stoudemire's shot. You think a year ago at this time, Oklahoma State, John Lucas hits the shot, the knockout St. Joe. This year, just exactly the reverse happens. Stoudemire hits the shot and sends Eddie Sutton's club home. Well, there are only 12 teams still alive. Billy, and this is coming out to Hill, who has checked in. The lob pass. Oh. Defended by Ewing. And that goes to show you how Ewing can get in the air. He's very un underrepresented in terms of how high he can jump because it was Brown that was going to go for this basket. Hill knows that Brown can sky, but watch Ewing get up there right with Brown. It's amazing how high he can go. What happened here, Billy, when Ewing deflected it, it hit off the shot clock, so out of bounds off Duke. And State will inbound. Still haven't scored after that break at the 16-minute mark. And Williams goes out of the game early at Shavlik Randolph, now on Davis. And there he is. Davis outside, back of the rim. Torbett back over to Hill. Hill with the floater. Just not shooting confidently. Melchione surrounded. They call a jump. I heard the whistle blow. It looks like a foul is going to be called from the outside. Big break for Duke. It'll be a foul on Michigan State. Now full court pressure. Reddick, Nelson better get back to help out. That was called on Chris Hill, Billy. Both coaches going to their bench early and often in this one. Figuring it's going to be a real struggle down the line. There's a push by Torbert. And again, for those of you expecting NC State and Wisconsin, we'll be getting you to the tip on time. It's a, in this window, if you will, the two games. It's like an old uh, ACC Big Ten challenge here, Billy, in Absol both games. Absolutely. And in that uh, little competition at the beginning of the year, these two met. And uh, in the nine meetings, ACC won seven of the nine. And remember, last year in that ACC Big Ten challenge, it was Dockery who did the job to get Duke started, and they just blew Michigan State out up in Lansing. That's Melchione, short on the three, and right into the arms of Davis. Hill surveying, left open. Good Tip. decision maker, got to make those shots inside. Ball comes out to Trannon. Fires at corner. Nice move, Ager with the basket. There's the difference, Shavlik Randolph inside with Williams out. Williams blocks that shot. Randolph can't get to it. They had gone three and a half minutes without scoring before that one and missed six in a row. And who has not taken a shot yet? J.J. Reddick. Reddick. Just like Delaware State, he went 10 minutes without one. Nelson driving in. Oh! One. Demarcus Nelson powering his way in. The young man is so strong inside. He is not an effective outside shooter, but he has great upper body strength. And look at him take it inside. Double pumps and gets it off. Had huge games this year in NC State, 15 points. North Carolina in that tremendous game with 16 points. Very valuable off the bench. Reddick out, well, again, without taking a shot. Anderson back in for State. Trannon called for the foul. And Demarcus Nelson will have the three-point opportunity. All ACC freshman team who committed to Duke as a 15-year-old sophomore in high school, the earliest any player ever committed to an ACC team in history. 
Craig Gumbel in New York will continue to update Michigan State and Duke, but we're approaching game time in Syracuse, where North Carolina State will meet Wisconsin. Those in the North Carolina area who want to continue to watch the Duke-Michigan State game, you'll find the Blue Devils playing on an alternate station. For the rest of you, let's take you out to Syracuse. Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery are there. We welcome you to Syracuse and this regional semifinal, the 10th seeded North Carolina State Wolfpack against the sixth seed Wisconsin Badgers out of the Big Ten. First time these two teams have ever met. And the winner of this game advances to the winner of our last game tonight, North Carolina, the top seed against Villanova. That one comes up in about two and a half hours. Good evening, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Bill Raftery. Bill, a really distinctive style for each of these two teams. They're patient. They take good shots, but they're different in it. They like to throw the ball in the post on the Wisconsin side, have you double kick it out for threes, and then the old Princeton offense of North Carolina State, they back cut, but they have a center who can make plays. That's very important in that set. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for Herb Sindek, who is in his ninth season as the North Carolina State head coach. Andrew Brackman, Ilion Evtimov, Julius Hodge, Cameron Venerman, and Engin Atsur, the starting five. Bo Ryan in his fourth season as the head coach at Wisconsin. His starting five, senior dominated, Mike Wilkinson, Zach Morley, Alondo Tucker, the sophomore, Sharif Shambliss, and Clayton Hansen. Game is brought to you in HD TV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television. The officiating crew: Ed Corbett, Vern Harris (he spells it correctly), and Joseph B. Lindsay. And we're underway. And here we go. Chased down by Eftimar and Vern Lundquist. Wisconsin go. This is Atzer. Now Eftimov. Right side. Brackman the freshman. Morley out on him. Tipped and out of bounds. It'll be North Carolina State. And they like to move the big people. Nice job by Wilkinson getting the hand on the basketball. Here's Hodge. Picked up by Hanson. Hanson, very good defender. Back outside, Brackman penetrate and push. And there's the first shot of the game, missed by Eftimov. And the rebound comes down to the hands of Sharif Shamless. Vern, they run that little shuffle cut, lock you in the box area. Everybody gets a chance in the low post for Wisconsin. Morley has had a good run in the Big Ten tournament and the first two NCAA games. There's Tucker up and blocked by Brackman. Out of bounds, it'll be North Carolina State ball. Boy, has this kid improved. I saw him early in the year, Brackman, Vern. He understands how to guard. He had a great block last week against UConn, then ran out, and he's a solid provider of defense that trip. Engin Atzer out of Istanbul, Turkey. Gets it to uh, Ebtimov from Sofia, Bulgaria. And he can make a play, can yes, he? Yes, indeed. Uh, unfortunately, a turnover. Uh, this is a tough dilemma for a coach when you play North Carolina State. Should you get up in them, try and deny, know you're going to get back cut, get embarrassed, or should you back off when they make three? So right now it looks like Wisconsin's being aggressive. Here's Tucker. Quick step off the glass and a foul. Well, he's a multifaceted performer. Can step outside. The ability to post up and, oh, explosive to the 10. I mean, that's no defense Reacting very well in the back, but Brackman unable to contain. That's a tough matchup for him. Tucker shoots a free throw. He has really improved his free throw shooting in the last seven to ten games. Had 15 of 18 the other night in the win over Bucknell. And up to 68% there, too. If he can put it on the floor and get to the rim, he'll get, get to the free throw line frequently. Minute and a half gone by. It's a 3 nothing Wisconsin lead. Expectation that this game will be in the 60s. There's a jump shot by Benneman, cans it and ties it up. Hey, I think he's provided a big lift to this basketball team. An excellent defender. He's teamed up with Hanson, who's a great outside shooter. He can lock people up. Brendan Plavik in the second half of the game against Charlotte. Brendan did a great job. There's the entry pass to Tucker, kick out to Morley. 
He likewise kicks it over to Hanson for three. Not there. Morris well, with the putback. He does a great job. I mean, he really gets in position to dominate on the glass. Clever, really understands the game. Zach Morley with the hair out of his eyes. He's effective. <laughs> well, gotten a more modest haircut here this year. The flop look. Here's Julius Hodge guarded by Hanson, the senior. Hodge misses. Rebound in the hands of Ev Tamab. Hell ball, possession arrow, Badgers. And that's where Hodge has gotten better, I think. Shot selection, making the jump shot. He's broadened his game, and of course, with the bounce, he's tough to defend. Now Sharif Shambles, who began his collegiate career at Penn State. He was there for three years, started the last two. Hanson. Morley. 5-3, Wisconsin lead. And everybody staying at home. Real good job defending. Wilkerson loves to backstep here. They set it up. That's scouting, Vern. And they know he's going to come back to that left shoulder. Just interesting as kids perform and pay attention to their coaches. Good things usually happen. I mean, that was the anticipated excellent coverage. Wilkinson picks up his first. North Carolina State with the basketball. NC State, a team that uh, comes into the record with 21 and into the game with a record of 21 and 13. Now, this is what they like to do with Hodge. If you're going to double, he'll find somebody. If not, he usually completes. I think he got his own tip, didn't he? I think he did. Hodge ties it up at five. Now, Shambles. Nice cut by Tucker. Too deep. Just easy, huh? But Wilkinson, they get up on him, Vern, because he's got the ability to knock down deep shots. Alondo Tucker's got four. Wisconsin leads at 7-5. See, I can picture you playing this offense, Vern. You can because yeah, you of Step, cut, be patient. Uh, they get some good open looks, and when you can make threes like that, huh? Betterman, Cameron on fire. That's Benneran. He's hitting 39% from three-point range, and he cans that one. And it gives North Carolina State a one-point edge. They both use both sides of the floor. See Wilkinson posting up. Now, if you want to double, they stay behind the three-point line. Wilkinson tries to use the glass unsuccessfully. And here's State with this one-point edge under 16 now in the first half. Step and back cut, balance the floor. You got your post up. Working the clock down, it's now at 13. Hodge offense. Ah. Ah. A, little, a little flop, a little Vlade Divac. <laughs> Side goal. <laughs> Second foul on Neitzel. And how about the uh, Spartans with now seven turnovers they forced? Good steals, and they're taking a lot of them to the basket. They've just started to finish some in the beginning of the ball game. They're making the steals, but weren't finishing. And you know Brown can. Boy, can he. Five steals in all for the Spartans. It's a young yeah. man with 20 double doubles on the year. It's been outstanding. Number one shot blocker, number one rebounder in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And again, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Melchioni and Nelson go out. Dockery and Love in the lineup for the first time. Reggie Love. So now we have two ends side by side, Jim. <laughs> two wide receivers yes, right. playing against each That's other good. on the basketball court. Trannon and Love. <laughs> Trannon and Love. <laughs> Tran had caught over 400 yards worth of passes and a couple of touchdowns and Big Ten play last fall. And Reggie Love, 75 he, catches, 875 yards in his career. Yeah, and had a tryout with the Packers uh, just last fall. That's Anderson working hard for the shot. Look how high Williams climbed for that one. Boy, isn't it amazing how he stays on the ground to get to the peak of his jump where the ball is as opposed to just flailing around as he used to in his first two years. Trannon on Williams. No help. Kind of like that matchup for Duke, but Williams comes up short on the jumper. Now Brown. Trying to use Trannon as a screener. Hill had a couple of looks and pulled it back out. Hill is now 0 for 11 in the tournament from the field. 
That's Torbert. Way off on that one, and Reddick tips it over to Love. Nice hands by the end. <laughs> Good reception. Just what you'd expect. And again, let's see if Reddick, who now is being guarded by Hill, can start getting some more looks. Another steal. Can you believe this? Six and a half, and Hill with a body foul call on Ewing. And you know, Duke is really getting sloppy with their ball handling out on the perimeter. These are good steals that Michigan State's making, but Duke has not been tough with the ball. Duke turning it over, but leading by two. First sub on the floor for North Carolina State, Jordan Collins, number 32. Playing with uh, a still separated right shoulder, hampered in by that. Boston regional with 7.42 remaining in the first half. Duke, 18, Michigan State, 16. Morley inbounds the ball and puts it in the hands of Sharif Jennings. You mentioned Collins coming in. He's clever around the post. Big thing, I think, is being patient defensively for both teams. They'll use a lot of the clock, Vern, and where they are running out on the shooters, aren't they? There's Morley, Danzig, and, and nice. Wisconsin back on top. Nice extra pass by Wilkinson. How's Julius Hodge? Hansen still has responsibility for him. Collins comes out to set the screen. Evtimar from way outside. Unbelievable range. Fluid. Imagine him without knee problems during his career. He's an excellent passer, great feel for the game, and can drag. There's a nice little screen. They get the push before. But both teams rely on ball movement. Kick it around the horn. Let everybody get a touch. And this time, Morley, who can beat you with follows or knockdown jumpers, and the ability to drag the D out. Wilkinson, a little uncomfortable that far from the rim, guarding his opponent. Eftimov with the three. It's an 11 9 score. Now Hanson comes out. Sharif Chambliss. Hodge on Tucker. Orlando Tucker, the sophomore from Lockport, Illinois. There's Wilkinson Ooh. taking away. Thank it, huh? An Think aggressive answer. maneuver. Little fake, and Bennerman slams it home. How about that? Just great hustle on the one man. Atzer just taking it away. And then that strong completion. That caught the attention of Bull Ryan. He's going to send two men in. One of whom is going to be Andreas Helmick. Here's Tucker again. No foul call. Shot too strong. North Carolina State. Here's Hodge. They'll push but make good decisions. They're not going to rush and throw it up. Eat that clock and get a good one. Principles of the old Princeton offense from Pete Carrill, but not the same. And, and as he told us, he's never really spoken to Pete about this offense. So a lot of it gleaned from his friendships and coaching. Predominantly when he was in the Midwest, met a couple of guys from Ohio and you know, understands it thoroughly, and his team does, which is more important. Now here's uh, Andreas Helmick, who's on the floor. And Cameron Taylor, number 23, who is uh, usually the first man on, he's got the ball in his hands right now. Taylor had a big, big 10 tournament. And he can really put it on the floor quick. Nice roll take. Look at that help again. This time, let him off. Another steal. Answer. Yes. How unselfish was Enemoff? He had an open look, decided why not? The little guy can ring the bell from deep, almost 40%. Raining threes for North Carolina State. They are perfect. Four of four. And up by a 16 to 9 score. Benneman gets called for this one. That's that closeout and the benefit of being able to put it on the deck. They want to take away that three-point shot. And you bounce and get by. Bo Ryan's going back to his bench. Ray Nixon is on the floor. Brian Butch also. Uh, Butch got a nice touch from Deep Fern. I think it'll be a nice prospect. Next year he'll have all the minutes he wants. Wilkinson will have graduated to probably being the best basketball player, dairy farmer in the country. <laughs> yes, he will. Wilkinson, top of the key. Here's Cameron Taylor. And they slip and coverage. 
They look inside for Wilkinson on this swing offense of Bo Ryan. Nice, nice beauty. They like to give him room to dominate like that. He's quicker than that big body implies. Wilkinson at 6'8. Nice post moves there. And it's a 16 11 score with 12 24 to go. First half. Gavin Grant's on the floor now for North Carolina State. He has the ball. Tucker, chest up. Offensive foul. Near the end of tonight's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Chevy and American Revolution. They're going to clear out for the big guy. He may have walked. Did he get the call? Yeah. A nice job defensively containing with the bounce. But Wilkinson, one of those guys that you really want to scrape down there and do some damage on him. Uh, get him before he puts it on the deck, I think, because he is extremely quick in the post area. Turnovers now even at four. Team fouls, big disparity. North Carolina State has picked up six. Wisconsin only one. Look how both clubs drag you away from the rim and Hodge here with some strength on Butch. See who they get, Nixon or Butch. And it will be Butch. Brian Butch, redshirt freshman out of Appleton, Wisconsin. 11.47 to go first half. Five points for State League. Experience. Ager surrounded, kicks it back out Torbert. As we approach six minutes in the first half, and Duke leading by six. Senior on freshman doesn't take him. Under 10 shot clock, Torbert. Williams came over to help out, but no help at all is a strong move <laughs> for the basket that time. You're right, Jim. Upper body strength enables you to get those kind of shots off. Torbert's first two of the game. Duke has never trailed in this one. Nelson has had problems handling the ball out on the wing. Driving in and crashing in on him, Paul Davis. Will they call it on Davis? Nope, they're going to call it. They're going to call it instead on Torbett. And we've got the singular at the half coming up with Greg Clark and Seth. We'll get you updated on all the latest tournament news and a live look at that NC State Wisconsin game up in Syracuse. You'll have that live look in singular at the half, plus a singular Naismith update. It's all coming up. Torbett to the bench with two. You don't really feel that the Michigan State can get in foul trouble with this deep bench that they have and with the experience that they have with all of these seniors. Nelson, that's the front end of a one on one. There's that 53% free throw shooter that will hurt you. Oh, and the ball gets away from Ager. Ager took his eye off it on the catch, looking inside to see if Anderson was breaking. You know, we were talking to Tom Izzo yesterday at the practice, Billy, and about his team really not getting a lot of attention in 13 and 3 in the Big Ten. As he put it, 80% of the time you go 13 and 3 in a regular season, you're going to win the conference. You'll win it or you're tying for it. Here, Bagrakis now on Reddick. Reddick has that one stripped. Dockery, though, falls on it and oh. somehow gets it over to Williams for the basket. What an assist from the floor by Sean Dockery. And how about the heads up move not to call the timeout when he knew it had, he had a passing lane? Well, Gracchus in here. Back over to Hill. Just doesn't have that shot anymore. It's going to be Michigan State ball. No, they overturn it. Back to Duke. You know, Dockery did a great job there, too. Jim pointing the other way emphatically and giving the weak side an official an opportunity to make the call. I think now's the time with Bagrakis on Reddick to get Reddick some looks. Under five minutes to go in the first half. And Duke right now matching its largest lead of the night, six. Here comes Reddick out. And that one wide of the mark. Reddick was leaning on the play. Normally he goes up and down very straight. Great pass by Hill, and Davis converts. And a chance for the three-point play. Hill Six. bounced it in just perfectly. There are some strong upper bodies in this ball game. Great job by Davis running on the break. 
Marcus Nelson slapped with his second foul. Hill comes out. Neitzel returns to the point. And Daniel Ewing jumps back in for the freshman Nelson. Down with two. Davis this year, big games against Stanford, which we had on uh, CBS earlier this year, and Wisconsin, 20 in both of those ball games. You know, he was matched up last week. He's got Sheldon Williams on his hands tonight. Last week in that Vermont game, he had Taylor Coppenrath to contend with all game long and uh, did a pretty fine job on a very respected player from Vermont. Coppenrath was 5 of 23 from the field in that game right. against the Spartans going against Davis. And Davis with 11 points and 14 rebounds. Solid offensive performance on his part. 8.6 rebounds for Davis leading the Spartans. It's Ewing finding a spot and hitting the three. Beautiful step back. Boy State really pushes it up the floor. Neitzel on the drive. Tough angle, but he got it. Second time in this ball game that Neitzel has taken Dockery all the way to the basket to score. Again, full court pressure employed. Ewing is really having an outstanding first half on both ends of the floor. Good hedge move by Anderson. Now Williams wide open. A pair of free throws coming up after the break. 30-26 has been tight throughout. That's the worst they could come up with. Oh, great student. Did We're everything he was asked of him. Here's Evtimov. Worked the perimeter. Gavin Grant back outside. Collins. They like to slap back and get you to three. A little flare screen to the open look. And there is the open look from Atzer. Boy, that was patience personified. Well, he told both of us, Dirk Nowitzki is his right. favorite player. And I go, wait a second. How about he do Turkle? Oh, yeah, I like him, too. Uh, yeah. Both long-range bombers. Here's Eftimov with the rebound into the hands of Atzer. His mother, Renata, is German. That may be the Nowitzki. I, I, think, I think you're right. And they are loading them up. Holy cow. Whew. Boy, that offense looks pretty good when you're drilling them from downtown. Downtown. La da da da. And right now, and, and that's her able to get a little nylon, Vern Lundquist. Greg Gumbel in New York, back to Austin in a moment after we update what's happening in Syracuse, where the Wolfpack are red hot from behind the three point line. Jordan Collins makes it six out of six for the Wolfpack. They've opened up a 10 point lead on Wisconsin, 10 12 to play in the first half. Let's get you back, Jim and Billy. We are back in the capital city of Texas, Austin. Austin, Texas for Duke and Michigan State. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Sheldon Williams leading the Blue Devils with 11 points here in the first half. Jim, what's been amazing about this fellow is his conditioning has been so good. He has not gotten any of those fatigue fouls that play, plagued him earlier in his career. This year he's committed 91 free, uh, fouls, but he's only fouled out of two ball games. And when you take in consideration what's asked of him and the fact that he's playing 34 minutes a game, rather incredible. Good concentration, good mental approach to basketball on, on his part. And then he takes that great physique and makes it work. Two for two, and back up to six. Matching largest of the game. Nice catch. Top of the key, Anderson able to drive right in, and look at Williams deny. What a block. Boy, that was going in for the slam. Here you got Redick out on the side for the jump shot. Passes up one three, now takes it. Boy, Boy. that's his shot. Yeah, he didn't miss many of those. He was maybe a little anxious, had more room than he thought. Some block at the other end, though, and look at Dockery pick his pocket. Now Dockery's looking for Redick again for yep. that jumper. Instead, inside oh. collision with Davis, <laughs> and the ball bounces off the Spartan. You know, if you make contact and it creates an advantage, here you'll see this block by Williams. There again, you notice Shoot. how he, wow. he does not knock the ball away. He keeps it in play. I thought that was a foul on Davis down the other end. He got by with one. Neitzel sits. Hill returns. Remember what Michigan State did earlier. They were getting the ball a lot on steals on the perimeter. Haven't had one lately. Williams splitting the defenders and ball loose. Knocked out by Duke. Pretty good job by Davis to get a little piece of that because he wasn't getting any double down help. Tom Izzo told us we have to find a way to stop their guards. They beat us up in that first encounter at Cameron. 
Ewing had 29 for the game. Reddick had 21 in the first half alone. He said, we've got to find a way to have a different game with their guards. And what have you seen, Billy? Well, they've done a fine job taking away that outside jump shot. Reddick was five for nine from three. And, and Ewing was five for seven from three. So that's, you know, 10 for 16, not bad. Davis turnaround baseliner. Rolls off the rim and a second chance. Ager just bouncing around up above the rim a couple of times. Ager got a piece of that twice. You notice now Duke has turned the ball over to Dockery to be the man bringing it up the court, freeing Ewing and Reddick for some shots. Ewing and Reddick tonight have combined for 14 in this first half without hitting a bunch of threes. Melchioni will take one, That's top a little, of the key. A little out of his range. Little out of his range. Surprised he took it. Hill whips it inside. Anderson on the blocks. Puts it up and in. And it's down to two with two minutes to play in the half. Tough matchup inside for Melchione. Anderson much quicker. Timeout called by Duke. A little flurry here by State. Wisconsin has led this Wisconsin team. Gavin Grant's doing a very good job on the land, though, here, Tucker. And whether it's in or out, his post defense has been excellent. Shot clock under 10. Nice slip and walk again. The interior defense stepping up. I mean, they have been very alert once again. Gavin Grant in the right spot. Wisconsin, in its last five games, has averaged only seven turnovers per game. They've really done a good job of protecting the ball already in the first half, six turnovers. And, and for the year 11, right? right? That's incredibly low. Now, they don't make mistakes. They usually don't hurt themselves. This is the end. They're going to have to toughen up. Brackman back on the floor now, the freshman. Out of Cincinnati's Muller High School, foul away from the ball. I think Etzimov will go to the line. Seven minutes, 46 seconds to go, first half. at the Austin Regional and look at these teams the last time they were in the Elite Eight including West Virginia that went on to the Final Four back in 1959. Ball hit Reddick on the foot good full court pressure by Hill. Yeah that was the West Virginia team led by the great Jerry West a Final Four that also included the incredible Oscar Robertson maybe two of the greatest that ever played the game and neither one able to come away with the championship. Duke just turned it over for the 10th time in this game. As we move inside at two minutes before the half. And Michigan State can tie it with a two, take the lead, or oh, where is that going? Well, they're going to say that Melchione touched the ball. He actually didn't touch the ball. He hit Hill's arm and committed a foul. A little bit of a makeup there. Mike Krzyzewski didn't like the call. And he's saying, why, <laughs> why are you calling it from that side of the floor? It's like they're, they're checking out a replay. Uh, well, Billy. I think no, well, they're checking out to see if it was hit. Are we going to put 35 seconds back on the clock? Or was the... Take a look right here. Watch Melchione. See, he hit him on the arm. Should have been a foul. If, if, you know, and here's what's interesting. If you're looking at the clock, if you don't call it a foul, then Hill threw the ball out of bounds, and it should be Duke's ball. Exactly. Yeah, it, something's got to be it, off there. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense why you'd look at it. But that's not a reviewable call in terms of they can't overrule the fact that they've already said it's off of Duke. It well, can't change that on right, a replay. Right. But there you can see where Melchione, no question, he hit Hill on the arm. His Austin Regional just loaded here with Michigan State and Duke, and then later tonight, Kentucky and Utah. These four teams have been the 10 Final Fours since 1996 combined. All of them have been to at least one Final Four, and a total of four championships. There's Hill. Pulled up on the shot. Boy, Michigan State doing a great job on the offensive glass. Weren't able to get that one, but they are crashing the boards. They're sending four men to the glass. And that means that if Duke can get it, they should be able to break somebody long for an easy basket. Reddick steps back. A three is wide. Back out to Ewing. 
And he'll pull it back. Hill had just enough hand up there to take away Reddick's look. Bouncing it in, Williams, we've seen this a lot tonight. And this one rolls off the front of the rim. Well, Michigan State just controlling the glass. They've got 13.5 rebound margin advantage. Number one in the Big Ten. Timeout called by the Spartans. 55 seconds to go in the half. 6.42 to go first half. Tucker goes to his right. Uh, pretty no good, call. Pretty good defensive play, too. Got him off, and here's another walk. I mean, the runouts, they're not letting them. Billy, tomorrow the regional final in Albuquerque. They'll be conference mates next year in the Big East, Louisville yeah. and West Virginia. I love the way the Mountaineers have been playing in this tournament. And then you got Rick Pitino trying to do something that's never been done right. in the tournament before by any coach. Taking three teams to the final four, three separate schools, Providence, which he did so well, Kentucky, which he took there three times, winning one national crown. And can he do it with Louisville? Hill, that would have given him the lead, the three. Second chance, Davis? No. He was on the line. Duke ball, 43 seconds. 43 seconds. They're going to have to give up the ball. And again, I really think Jim Reddick averages 15 shots a game. He's had minimal shots today and actually has taken some, a couple of bad shots. You've got to give Michigan State some credit. They've got the right kind of athlete to guard him. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, get their hands up in his face. And he has not had many good looks. Davis sits down from Michigan State. Reddick has missed his last four from the field, Billy. He's had Ager on him. He's had Brown on him. He's had Hill on him. Three guys that really match up well defensively. We've got an eight-second differential on the game clock. Duke working it down with the two-point lead. You ain't going to try to take him off the dribble? Could Brown's be. Now, quick. remember, nope. Davis is out. Williams, they may be looking for him down low. Under 10 on the shot clock. Oh. Dockery pinned. Oh, Four good. seconds, and that's a turnover again committed by the Blue Devils. They're 11th. That was a good backdoor cut idea by Melchioni, but Anderson was able to get a leg out and stopped him. David McClure comes in. Defensive purposes for Duke, and Davis returns for Michigan State. Ten seconds. Ten seconds to tie it or take the lead at halftime. Ager, jump step, and they're going to call oh. a foul on Williams. He thought it was all ball again. I would have to agree it was all ball. He could have blocked it with either hand. But a failing by Duke not to stop the dribbler. Without question, that was all ball. You notice how his hands go straight up in the air, Jim, when he blocks the shot. So he doesn't come down with a chopping motion. I thought it was a pretty good block. That's two fouls on Sheldon Williams and Maurice Ager, the junior from Detroit. His scoring average jumped five points this year to 13 plus points a game. And he's got one more here to tie it. When's the last time you saw a team have the number one, the number three, and the number five best free throw shooter in a league? That's what Michigan State has. In the case of Ager, he's number five. Allen Anderson was number one. Shannon Brown was number three. Kevin Tolbert was number number two. So one, two, three, and five. That one ties it. Here we go, Billy. Four seconds to go in the half. Melchione, plenty of time to dribble all the way. Dockery lost it at midcourt. Anderson has it. And the clock didn't start, Billy, and they're going to get a basket oh, oh, out of no, it. Wait, Hold wait. on a minute. Krzyzewski no, no, no. sees it, whoa, too. Whoa, whoa, Michigan whoa, whoa. State's running off the floor, and the clock never started. There's no way they would have had four seconds to work with from the point it was inbounded till it was taken away at midcourt, and Anderson scored. Now the assistant coaches from Duke are doing the right thing. They're calling their team back. The coaches from Michigan State are saying, let's go to the locker room. Without Boy. question, the officials will see that that clock did not start. Boy, they ran to the locker room, the Spartans. Here you go. The Look, clock, the clock is, not is not starting. See that? There Look at seconds. Anderson was ready to launch it. He yep. thought it had to be out of time. He sees now the clock has malfunctioned. He goes ahead and lays it in inside of a second. Without question, Jim, there's two and a half seconds that transpired as the ball was thrown in bounds. That ball was laid in, what would you say, with about six tenths of a second to right. go? But look at this, it's funny. Duke's players are back out on the floor. Tom Izzo has his door locked. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the point. What time well, was on the clock when the ball went in? If it's six tenths of a second, they've got to, I guess, make the call that obviously more than a second would have disappeared. Look at Anderson. Oh, he was ready that. to launch it at, at midcourt. Michigan State's returning.
And everyone's exiting. It looks oh, like it looks like. Now yeah, we're hearing they waved it off. Yeah, they've just taken it off the board, Billy. And Tom Izzo was not out as part of that conversation. Mike Krzyzewski never left the floor. Let's say 1,001, 1,002, I realize different speed, 1,003, 1,004. So basically, you know, when Anderson had that ball ready to launch it, that clock should have been off. Yep. You see, he scored. And you don't give Anderson a lot of credit. He looked up and saw the clock, yeah, had the presence of mind to say, hey, I'm taking this to the basket. I've got 4.2 seconds to go. Pretty shrewd stuff, I'm telling you. But they're going to take the basket off. And we're tied at 32. Tied at 32. Greg Gumbel coming up with the singular at the half. Defense set this flow up, Vern. Oh, not a good play. Another one. Is that nine? That's Woo. nine. Oh, the ability to maneuver offensively. You got to bounce that pill. A little kiss, Vern, like was in Syracuse on a beautiful day. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our studios and Singular at the Half. We are tied at halftime in Austin, Michigan State, and Duke at 32 apiece. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. We have plenty to talk about. We also have another game in progress that's taking place out in Syracuse, NC State, and Wisconsin. Let's join Vern Lundquist and Bill Rafferty. North Carolina State up by seven. They've gotten there by hitting six of eight from three. And Wisconsin, a team that's averaged only seven turnovers in the last five games, already built with nine turnovers in this I, one. I could hear Bo Ryan saying, it's just that we don't turn the ball over. A tough guy, and his team responds to him, but they're not getting shots. You must get shots. There you can get some rebounds, and obviously uh, the opponent, like State, knows how to run their offense, get good looks, particularly to threes on the slapback pass. In trying to find answers, Bo Ryan has already gone 10 deep. He's played 10 in the first half. And they haven't played good post defense. Right now, Nixon inside trying to defend. Here's that slap back. Here's Julius Hodge. Kind of quiet first half. That one misfires. And Jason Chappell, a seldom used tall post player at 6'10, grabs the rebound. Largest lead in the ball game was 10 at 23 to 13 for North Carolina State. Boy, State's done a great job scouting. They just took that stagger and look at the denial. And if you're a Wisconsin fan just joining us and you're wondering where is Mike Wilkinson, he's on the bench with two fouls and he has committed five turnovers already. And there's the guy that's got to light it up for him. With four seconds left, they got a tough shot under duress. Jumper Hodge off the mark. It comes out a little bit funny, doesn't it, that shot? It looks like he's got his left hand on it too much. Of course, I'm telling the guy that uh, sort of put this team on its shoulders the last month. Julius Hodge, though, is one of seven in this ballgame. Hodge with that three-point play to defeat UConn last week in the second round. Jumper way outside. Shambles, and he drew nothing but air. Winner of this one goes on to take on either North Carolina or Villanova on Sunday afternoon. With a spot in the final four in the balance. Interesting scene here with 30-some thousand on hand. Immediately behind Mike Wilkinson in the Wisconsin bench, the Carolina Blue, and they are seated right next to the North Carolina State Red. Well, they are just committing fouls, too. A lot of mistakes you don't see. Chapel that time with the leg thrust. The smoothness that you see of Wisconsin's offense all year, non-existent this first half. This is one of those, let's stay together and get inside. There's something about the comfort of a locker room for a coach. Hey, fellas, I mean, maybe a little coercing and maybe some X and O work done on the board, but just to get them back in this game, they are out of rhythm totally, and it's a, you know, really a testimony to great preparation, I think, by State on the defensive end. Elian Eftimov will shoot another perfect this trip.